Okay. Okay. All right. You happy with the explanation that I yep. gave earlier on? So at the moment we've got all-wheel drive lock engaged. Okay. And we've got downhill brake uh, 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 control engaged as well. Okay. All right. So that will click in at about seven kilometres an hour, and you'll get da 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 happening as long as you're not on the brake or the accelerator. But if you press the accelerator, I mean, oh, it's on automatic. I drove earlier. I mean, I drove a manual car with uh, this hill descent yeah. control. And if I press the accelerator, it started accelerating uh, in the same manner. I mean, if I press it more, yeah. it got speed, but it was on uh, neutral, not in gear. And the uh, hill descent left me uh, uh, oh, well. going faster, if you understand. Yeah, but the, the thing is with hill descent, which is an ele electronic function, yes. <coughs> as soon as you touch the brake or the, or the brake or the accelerator, it, is it overrides it. Oh, okay. <coughs> as soon as you come off them, it comes back in. So, if you're in neutral, your hill descent will still take you down the slope. But as soon as you touch the throttle, it's going to disengage it. Okay. So it's one of the one of the <coughs> one of the things that we say to when we're instructing <coughs> that people need to be careful of, because if they're inexperienced and the rest of their foot in the brake, that hill descent function that you're relying on, especially in a vehicle like this, which has no uh, engine braking, you suddenly don't have your braking apart from pressing on it and most people are just going to press lock the wheels up especially if it's slippery and down the hill they go like a toboggan anyway let's try it so, so down into drive and first gear and then round to your left first is just cross like that so we will keep it in the first only just keep it in the first we don't need any other gears okay so uh, this way this yep So your first your first obstacle is as you come up to the top of the hill, you'll you'll lose sight of the road on the other side. Where the cane is, that's where you need to start braking a little because there's a big hole on the left hand side that gives us about a meter of lift behind okay. us. So gently brake, brake, brake. That's what we were trying to stop. <laughs> but you'll get that right the next time we come okay. right. So down here, and as we go over the humps, you'll feel the the, the hill brake assist coming in usually in the bottom of the, the troughs. So you can just drive over these and just let her do her own thing almost. So you come over this, off the brake, off the accelerator. Off, off, yeah. okay. And there you go, there it comes in. It'll come in again here, and then up to the top of the hill and round to the right. And straight ahead. So a bit of an axle twister here, you can see where it's been losing traction. Rear left, front right. So it just needs a little bit of momentum to take you through the event. Perfect, well done. Yeah, remember what the front goes through, the back has to go through as well. So yeah. sometimes you need to taper your, round to the right, you need to taper your speed as you come out of a, 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 a four wheel drive event. So. Nice and slowly here, this is 25 degree side slope. And as you come to the end, bring the speed down and start turning across to the left. Yeah, not too steep. That's good. And let her ride up to the left hand side. That's you now on a 30 degree side slope. Okay. And as we come out the end here, you'll feel the brake traction control come in again. Uh huh. And that pulls you through. Round to the right again. I'm remembering where the hole is. <laughs> I was expecting uh, the uh, hill descent thing uh, yep. to take the control, but it, I w I'm supposed to go slower than that. Oh, in some places, yes. The, the target speed uh, for hill descent on this vehicle is set at 7 kilometers an hour. Okay. Or thereabouts. You can't change that at all. So for some stuff like this, you need to be slower than that. Yep. So you have to use the brake. So, um, you know, the vehicle's not really been built as an off-road ve vehicle. So there's been none of that functionality built into it where you can, say, adjust your target speed for hill descent by using your cruise control, for instance. Um, because the engineers haven't you know, whoever's designed the car hasn't hasn't designed it to do this. 
Um, you know, I say that this is a car that is not an off-road car, it's a car that can go off-road. Yes. So we'll go round to the right again, same same route, and then right again and under the bridge. So, you know, why why should the why should the engineers design into it, you know, um, adjustable hill descent control? Nobody really is going to use it. You yeah. know, I mean, ninety nine percent, ninety nine point nine percent of people who buy an off roader, even if it's a Range Rover, a Discovery, a Mercedes, Mercedes G wagon, a Jeep Wrangler. They're not going to take it off road, all right. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, of course, many manufacturers do put in a lot of off road functionality into them that will never get used. But of course, people want to buying a likes of Range Rover want to know that it can actually drive off road. Um, so, here to show you how quickly the system works, we'll disengage okay. the all wheel drive lock, and from here, I want you to head towards the lamp post and get into a cross-axle situation on, okay. the, on the, the ramp on the other side. So straight so, now? So straight. Not quickly, just slowly. So as you actually, you know, we push the vehicle into having to work hard. Okay. So now we're going to lift. This wheel's got plenty of grip. This wheel hasn't. Uh -huh. Now that... It's kicking. You went in, in two-wheel drive. So you can see how quickly... Yeah. Yeah. Now, who's it who's saying it takes several revolutions before it kicks in? One of your uh, colleagues, wasn't it? I said it has a delay. A ah, delay. Know. Did you notice any delay? Not at all. Not no, at all. No, no. Yeah, it's pretty pretty instantaneous. Of course, again, it all depends how the the engineers program it. But it's that's a, pretty quick. It's a matter of milliseconds. Yeah. They said. Because it doesn't have to spin the wheel outside. It spin. It's Spins in the um, in the in the in the, clutch in the clutch. Yeah. yeah, and in fact, there's two mechanisms going on. They have a um, they have a hydraulic mechanism, uh, a mechanical hydraulic mechanism, starting the the compression of the clutch, and then it becomes an electro hydraulic mechanism. So they've got, they're using the the spinning motion of the prop shaft to start the um, to initiate the the progression of the clutch from open to fully closed. And then there's uh, then there's an electric motor pump actuator which does the same thing as well at the same, uh, you know within all that, those milliseconds. So I'd quite like to see one taken apart. It'd be quite interesting to see what it looks like straight ahead. and gently down to the bottom of the slope. Get yourself lined up with the, the hill. You're going to aim for the lift shaft that's in front of you. So nice and gently on the throttle. <laughs> and a bit more. Okay, that's good. Now from here, while we're sitting horizontally, our, uh, our hill, hill descent function is engaged, but it's in passive mode. As soon as you, you, you hit an incline, either pointing down or going up, it becomes active, ready to work. Okay. So if we're, ta re we're going to take straight into uh, going downhill, what you'll find is the vehicle will take off really quickly, two seven kilometers an hour, and then the system will start working and slowing us up. But by that time, it's actually traveling quite fast, and the, the system then has to work even harder to slow it down. However, if you just edge over the, the top here so she goes from being flat to on a slight angle, that makes the system active because it now goes, I'm on a slope, and it will actually react a lot quicker as you go down the slope. Okay. So just edge over the top and then come off the brake completely. So here we're having to trust the system will work. All right? And you'll feel, feel it speed up. So I think so take off. Yep, you feel it speed up and uh -huh. then it comes in. Okay. And then round to the right. Had we not done that and just driven straight into it, it would have been a bit a little bit quicker as we went down the slope. Round to the right. And then over the over the bridge. You made that bridge? Yes. Yes I did. I made the whole course actually. 
this is about the third bridge this year that I've made like this. <laughs> so that's good, that's you right on top of the middle logs. Okay, the same thing? Same though? thing, just straight through. Yep. Uh -huh. Then a bigger cross axle here. Uh, yep, a okay. bit, bit of power just to pull you through. Keep going, keep going, keep going. You feel a little, little of the um, the uh, electronic stability control coming in and uh, pulling power away from you as well. Grand, well done. So Thank this you. swing round in a circle so the, those are the vehicles pointing out. I'm sure that nobody will buy this car to that. No, no, but absolutely not. It's comfortable to know it can yeah. do it. Well, I think, you know, what's, what's unique about it, the fact that you can, whereas it's really going to come into its own with people who buy this, who live in remote areas in the country, they're having to deal with snow and muddy roads, and, you know, maybe they go off onto forest tracks and things like that. That's where it's kind of going to come into its own. They don't really have to worry about that because it engages so quickly automatically. But if you have a bit more knowledge and you know what you're doing, then you've got the ability to go, well, I'm going to engage that now because I'm going off-road. Then yeah. you've just got to worry about your ground clearances and things like that at the front of the car. It has a, a pretty good ground, ground clearance. Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, SUV. Yeah. And then, you know, look what it does on-road. Cruise down the Autobahn at 190 kilometers an hour and, and then you can come off and do this. It could be better if that front overhang would be a bit shorter. Short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, if they're looking for fuel economy and fuel efficiency, of it has to look good, anyway. and it has to look good. Yeah. So it's always a compromise. Yeah. Otherwise, we'd be running about in a chassis with an engine on it and no body work. Thank you very Great. much. My pleasure. Glad you away from here.